what is now SK Telecom T1. And now that everything's calmed down, Bad Romans is finished, the players are all in, yep. and Champion Select has just begun. Oh. Honest, bands, picks. Oh, I'd so be fast. very surprised to see Twitch make its way through. We have got uh, Twisted Fate Band straight off the bat, taking that away from Ambition, as we saw throughout the course of the tournament There's so the far. There's the Twitch ban. And there is that Twitch ban. And a Thresh ban is not a surprise at all. A Twitch ban, I think it was good. it's a good call. I didn't think they would actually ban it. They're actually that afraid of Twitch. He's very, very powerful, especially in the early game. If he does manage to get ahead during the laning phase at all, it's very, very difficult to catch up against him. He is a champion that you can jump onto and blow up. But again, running the risk of letting that spray and pray tear your team fight, you know, your team apart during the team fight phase after 15, 20 minutes, it's it's too much of a risk. And in the remaining bans, Elise and Kale. We've seen a lot of that this weekend, haven't we? Yeah, Elise and Kale, we've seen her play, oh, we've seen Elise played once or twice, but never really to much of uh, much success, to be honest. But uh, the comps that she played against they were very well equipped to take her down and just never really worked but she's still a very strong champion she is still completely bad worthy and it makes sense that uh, SK Telecom are taking that out they are hovering over that Jarvan which we've seen Ambition in actual fact play during the quarterfinals going something like 8-0-12 after a bit of a crazy lane swap putting him down in the bottom lane and completely carrying CJ into Malays through that quarterfinal so to have that first pick taken away makes a lot of sense on top of the fact that he's also just a very strong champion to include in any lineup so uh, smart pick from SKT yeah SKT looks like they're gonna lock in Caitlyn and Zinn both strong champions probably gonna lock those that still leaves Shen on the table and it leaves Misfortune. Yeah, you know, the reason you know that, that Misfortune is, is something to talk about is the fact that we've seen Caitlyn and Misfortune as the primary go-to AD carries this particular tournament. Captain Jack is more comfortable on Caitlyn, I feel, than his MF. He's been playing her a lot lately. Has been banned against him. Exactly, and that's what I was going to get to as well. You know, MF and Kate have actually drawn many, many bans this tournament. So, you know, those are probably the two ADCs that I most likely see. I wouldn't be surprised to see the likes of a Lulu as a support for CJ Antis Blaze and maybe doing that lane swap that we have been seeing out of these Korean teams time and time again. If the Sakali does get locked in, it's going to go to Reaper up in the top lane. He has been using it numerous times this weekend. Has actually had uh, uh, builds of Warmogs, goes as on his hourglass and gets a little bit tanky and beefy as well. Yeah, I wanted to go on to that too. Suno, we've seen him play Lux down in the bottom lane in a 2v1 situation or against a Bruiser. We've seen him play Karthus in the same role too, so I'm really intrigued to see what they're going to pull out, if it's one of those champions again or if it's something Didn't they like play Cassiopeia as well? Game one, uh, day one. It might have been Cassie against Rise. No, it was, no, different game. SK it, yep. was, it was SK Telecom Team 1, but it was, uh, it was against them. It was LGIM. All right. Played it against, uh, against SK Telecom, and unfortunately, it didn't really work out. Ambition, yeah. Hovering over Shaco, I doubt it, but there is that. Sona pick. Lulu been taken away. Sona is still a very powerful poke in orientated laning support. Can work very well with Caitlyn. Can be lane swapped to mid if they really want to shut that down. It's a little bit... Uh, more unworldly because she doesn't have the wave flare that Lulu's Glitter Lance really brings, but uh, that ultimate is incredibly powerful, especially when combined with Rumble, who honestly I'm surprised he's got this far through the pick ban phase considering how much we've seen him throughout the weekend. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We've actually seen Rumble being banned out a number of times against these Korean teams, and you know, we talked about the Korean meta and how they like to push, how they like to be very, very aggressive, get that lane control uh, and the ability to shove lanes and equalize it. You cannot stop talking about the impact that they can have in team fights. Varus has been the AD carry locked in for SK Telecom Team 1, who are on the blue team this time. And they're going to decide who they're going to put in the middle lane. If they take Lux, I think this is almost a mirror of comps that they have been running throughout the weekend. So, it, you know, it's, it's champions they're comfortable with and it's a composition they're happy playing. I'm pretty sure that Lux pick's going to go, if it locks, it will go to Suno. Suno will, uh, they'll swap it around and they'll try and put him up against the Rumble, which is what we saw before, because Akali cannot lane again in that situation. She'll have to swap around, she'll probably go into the, uh, the mid lane. It'll probably still be Reaper on it. That's uh, the mistake we made in the in the first opening group stage when they did swap it around. I thought it was going to be in the top lane because it was Reaper, but no, he still took it to that mid. Wow. The position on the map makes no, oh, not much difference to him, but that was a very quick Z lock in. Yeah, instantly locked in. I believe Alex is the only one that we've seen playing it this weekend. Um, you know, he has been picked a couple of times, has the ability to really, really, you know, jump onto somebody and burst them down. And against, you know, a Lulu, a Lux, and a Kali, in those early levels until those tanky items get built up, Zed's pretty much going to have a very good time of picking kills up if he does decide to roam and yank. Yeah, exactly. That's what they're going to want him to do, providing their, their lane switches don't go anywhere. They've got a good early aggression sense there from Xin Chao. His, his early ganks are very powerful, and then there's no skill shots involved in that. It's just a case of 
right click, uh, right click until you're in range, and then just target the champion, and you're on. This hard CC is a good slow. That's a knockup and can be quite scary when you put it alongside a rumble. We saw in uh, earlier on with uh, Frost, in fact, Cloud Templar running that in Xiao, giving Shy a double kill very early. I mean, rumble kind of set the pace of that game. All right, well the game is loading. Everyone's ready. My brain, I'm, it's on the floor somewhere. I'm going to pick it up in between this game, put it back in, rejoin reality. We're going to throw it over the casters. We're opening the day with Joe Miller and Jason Kaplan, and this is going to be crazy. So crazy, I think, is the right word for this one. We've already seen <laughs> enough crazy for one day, I think, and it's only the start of the day, so I don't even know where we're going to go from here. It's, it's only got to get better from here, though. I mean, that bad bromance was awesome. And even seeing Quickshot up there dancing, I was, I was kind of impressed. And you had you know, Alex the in there whole. as well. Yeah, I can't even dance like that. And then he looked like Duke Nukem over there on, on the Duke analysis test. Duke Nukem? Duke Nukem? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so SK Telecom T1 versus CJ enters place. Jason, we've got the picks locked in here. Who's your favorite? I don't, uh, well, we have Reaper going up against his uh, previous team. I really want to say just based on composition, that I'm going to give it over to SK Telecom T1 just because of that Akali pick and that Lux. They can just put so much damage down, and we've seen Reaper and uh, we've seen Suno on these champions before in day one. Yeah, we can see that. Both teams on your screens looking very, very focused for this one. Of course, a spot in the final awaits the winner of this best of three. Going to be taking on CJ Entus Frost, who took down Gambit last night. Now, in a, in a good game, a three-game best of three, the first uh, full best of three, I think we can say, up until now. But level one, Jason, any action expected? Uh, I wouldn't really expect anything from uh, the first game of the best of three. It's really a different mindset between these best of ones. It's, you have to kind of play a little safe, play a little comfortable in that first game, and then if you do lose, maybe pull something out in that second game. And uh, both teams have you know, a decent level one fight, but I'd have to give it over to Telcom if they do want to go for that invade. But as you see, Starlash just going to ward up that Wraith camp and just try to make sure, <laughs> and even spam dance next to the ward. Why not? <laughs> and we've seen a lot of Lulu out of Starlash as well. Been quite happy to uh, secure those kills, uh, fitting in with the top supports these days who are uh, more than happy to finish <laughs> the off the, uh, yeah, more than happy to finish off the kills in the end there. So. What are we going to see here from the start? As we said, wards already down. A couple of wards already out for uh, CJ Blaze there on the top side. There's that Explorer ward going to time out. Lustboy just putting himself another one down there on that curved bush. So, start from this one going to be Helios and Flame up on the top side. Going to be taking away those golems early on. We can see that Starless and Raven are going to be taking walls, so that lane switch is going to come around. Yeah, it looks like we will, in fact, actually have Reaper middle yet again and soon go down towards that bottom lane, 1v2 with his Lux. As Varus and Lulu up towards the top side against Rumble, who, you know, Flaming, he doesn't have his uh, cloth armor five pots, which he ran last time when he was playing Rumble, and that might be really bad for him because they have a lot of harass to really push him out of lane and really keep him uh, low on that CS. Well, let's see. Team's going to get themselves into the lanes. We see Helios there smiting off the red buff. Beelzehan hasn't used his smite yet, so he's going to be uh, going over, getting that blue off in there quickly. We'll see if he, uh, they try for that obvious, in my opinion, three-man gank uh, into the lane there in those 2v1s, but we'll have to see how that all works out. Beelzehan there just doing that one. Captain Jack actually down in this bottom lane. Going to be trying to put as much pressure as he can on towards Suno and actually getting off the uh, pilt of a Peacemaker then. It looks very squishy in these early levels. That could be a problem for Suno. Yeah, they're doing a great job so far of just harassing as much as possible. And not to mention, there is no ward on this bottom side of the map. So if Helios wanted to, he could come in for that gank. As you see, Bezalhan going to be going in through the, uh, the Baron pit, which is a, a kind of a standard thing you do as Jarvan. But they have a nice ward down, and Flame is going to back off. Yeah, we'll see what Flame does from this point on. Just firing out those harpoons. Ambition coming oh, yeah. up towards his top side as well. So they're going to look to counter that early on. And maybe just the presence of Ambition there will be enough to send Beelzehan away. And actually, we can see on the minimap there that he is actually walking down through the enemy jungle to get away. Still, a lot of damage is done. I mean, he will be taking these race, And if he gets them, it's going to help him out a little bit. Because he did leave that lane. He did miss out on a lot of CS and a lot of experience. And if Reaper hits six before him, he's going to have a really tough time in lane. As he was just coming up here to defend this lane. I mean, we see this all the time. It's kind of common where a 2v1 lane in the jungle, either if he's not gaking that uh, 3v1 or turning into a 3v1, he's just coming up there to defend that turret, which is already down to that half health. Well, Beelzehan is actually taking away the golems here from Blaze. Let's see if he decides to get involved up in this top lane here on the action. There's a flag put down 
but I'm not sure that they're going to go any further. They're quite happy just to be hammering away on this turret, and it is going to go down four minutes in. First turret going over to SK Telecom T1. And let's see what they can actually pull off of this, because currently in their bottom lane, Suno is having a really rough time down there. He's sitting at that 8 CS to Caitlyn's 21. And they're just keeping that lane pushed up as much as possible. It looks like they might be able to get this tower too is on this uh, next wave or the wave after that. And as you see on the top side, I mean, SK Telecom, they're not stopping. They're still pushing because no one else is coming up to help them in the top side. And they might be able to get a good chunk of damage onto this turret. Yeah, I mean, tower pushing strategies we've seen very, very often so far in the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship. Doesn't look like SK Telecom are going to go for anything different with this one. I mean, they've pushed very, very early on through that. They're almost a thousand gold in the lead after four minutes. That's a big deal, Jason. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, they have the ability to keep pushing that top lane if they want to. However, they did back just to buy up. I mean, they could have kept Helios up there for as long as possible while no one else was switching around. But, you know, they need to help their bot lane. As you see, Suno, that tower is going to go down very shortly. As we do have finally Raven and Starlast coming down into this lane. Yeah, finally, they will uh, switch that one around. 1-1 one, one in turrets. That brings us back even in the gold. And uh, from this point on, we'll see how that one goes down. If we look through the CS then, 30 to 35 between the AD carries. Looks to Z, 13 to 39. That is a huge, huge difference that Reaper is uh, bringing forward right now. On the other hand, you've got Rumble with only 9 CS there, Flame, and 33 CS on the Akali. So those switches, okay. Yeah, it's harming them in some ways, but also in the other side. Also a good thing. Yeah, it's really hard to compare it like this since you have Lux in the solo yeah. with Rumble. You have to, you know, go the 13 to the 12. So they're not, you know, they're pretty even so far. Um, Lux actually picking up that tier, going to help out as the game progresses. But both of them losing that turret uh, at this point. And then we have, you know, Reaper, but you're saying before that 35 to 46 in the mid lane. And he had that lane to himself for a little bit as, you know, Ambition went up towards that top side. And yet he's still behind in CS. However, he is almost level 6, I believe. And that will uh, really kind of give uh, SK Telecom that, that idea to start fighting because Reaper gets so strong at that level 6. Yeah, certainly does not be in home to buy just yet, but that may be coming in here in just a second. We talk about junglers, Jason, but to be honest, Jarvan has spent most of his time in the lanes here. Bales hand looking like he's finally going to go back. Ambition coming down to try and help out with this bottom lane. Don't want to lose a second turret. Only six and a half minutes in. I do have to say that I've been really impressed with Bales hand's play over the over the first day and today. He's He's not necessarily aggressive, I and mean, he can be one of those junglers where he can always be ganking and really pull off those kills, but he can also be really supportive, which you've seen happen so far. And it looked like SK Telecom was potentially going for Dragon just because they had everyone down towards that bottom side. They had a three-man push on the bottom lane, and they had uh, Flame just stuck in that top lane trying to farm that lane back out, but without that pink where they are going to back out, and we have Reaper going up towards this top lane. Yeah, Reaper going to be going in there, but again, this bottom lane is still being pressured by Stalas and Raven. Down to be low... Half HP there, and uh, Helios also taking damage as he comes across. Beelzehan waiting in middle. Oh, this is bad. And try and get in here on towards Ambition. The knockup will actually come in there. And they've just not quite got the damage at this stage to be taking out that Zed. I think his Ambition is level 6, so if he wanted to go in on Suno, he could blow him up almost instantly. He does have a cloth armor, though, so it has a little bit um, to help him up maybe sustain that fight. But if he gets a little bit low, Ambition's going to go in with that Ignite and pick up that kill. So, Helios coming down, he's going to sneak through into those bushes. Let's see if he can actually get involved on the action. Will Starlass and Raven make a wrong footing in this one? Helios is still waiting there. Did hit the recall, but decided not to uh, follow it through. And in the end, he's now figuring that they figured out where he is, but actually they haven't. Helios going to come in here on towards Starlast. Going to put some damage out, flash away. But they focus around on towards Raven. Can they actually take him down though? No. They see Beelzehan coming in here. He's going to flash. Doesn't quite get the knock up there. And he's only level 5, so of course doesn't have that cataclysm. And Suno was heading down from that mid lane. Looks like they wanted to set up that ultimate. That's why he flashed in, trying to get that knock up. But unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. And now Sinnoh's going to be pushed out of lane yet again as uh, Ambition is going to be free to farm that mid lane. But that was the first gank we've actually seen so far that actually happened. I mean, the rest of the time it's just been the junglers just supporting their solo lanes. But Dragon is being started off. And so far, SK Telecom has no idea. Yeah, Dragon kicked off here. Captain Jack going to join him with Helios and Lost Boy. Trying to take that one down. Ambition coming down from the middle lane as well. Beelzehan is actually on the backside. Doesn't have Smite available at this point. So wouldn't even be able to get in there for that Smite steal anyway. And that will be Blaze picking up the dragon. Here we go. Raven going to go very, very low. 
and there's the first blood. Eating the hole comes out from Captain Jack. That's what Blaze were looking for. Yeah, great play by them. Getting that dragon. Then oh, we see Ambition actually getting caught. Wow. And didn't even really have time to say nope. anything about that one because, <laughs> well, that's a power of looks. Gets up to level six. Managed to land a full combo in there. We have Jarvan coming in to back up as well. Flame actually going in on towards Reaper here. Going to put the Ignite down and they're going to go head to head. There's the Shroud put down. Is Reaper going to follow on with this one? Flame not exactly healthy either. And as Reaper comes through, realizes that Fra uh, Flame is too far away from him and doesn't go in. So 1-1, one, one, but good gold lead here from Blaze with that Dragon. Yeah, and SK Telecom, they're still being very aggressive. They have that mill turret down about third health, same as the bot lane. They ha have the ability to just start, you know, three, four man pushing these turrets down, getting some extra gold since they currently are behind at this point. But, you know, Flame has been doing a good job. He's caught back up in CS, so has uh, Suna so far. And it's going to come down to the next couple of minutes, I have to say, maybe like the next five to ten minutes is where the game's really going to be decided since SK Telecom have a really bursty team. They're trying to kill someone on uh, Blaze's side and then turn it into a 5v4. And they also get just taking away that red buff. Got Sona Kaelin now in that middle lane. So uh, Captain Jack with that first blood on him. Got that Doran's blade in there with the Berserker Grooves already. And he's going to go straight in. Putting down a bit of turret damage. Ambition coming around the side here as well. Will they decide to go in? Reaper actually trying to force Captain Jack away. And he's done enough damage there to back them off. And blue currently is up right, or is up right now for SK Telecom. Luckily, they will be able to secure it over to Suno. That tier is already starting to stack up quite a bit. And we know how dependent Lux really is on that cooldown reduction. And that's just, I mean, if, if their ult isn't up, they're not going to want to start these team fights. But with that blue, it's going to help out quite a bit. And Ambition hasn't really gotten one ulti off just yet. We've seen Alex uh, actually boss around Rise in the mid lane quite often. And I guess that's just really due to Helios not really being able to gank much. Let's have a look down the CSN. 84 to 76 is the difference between the AD carries, but Varus is still behind because of that first blow, because of the damage that they, uh, because of the kill that they had on Dragon earlier on as well. Brutalizer in for Zed, and you saw there putting the damage in. Is Helios gonna go in towards Reaper? He's gonna flash away, but Helios gonna follow through for this one. Reaper in some real trouble here. Is he gonna go down? Yes, he is. Flame picks up the kill as they turn around on towards Bielzihan. Flame very healthy still. So Zed comes in as well. And they managed to pick off Beelzehan. That's a kill for both Rumble and for Xin Zhao. That is another great play out of Blaze. That was a great turnaround because Reaper was trying to bait them in for that uh, for Beelzehan to come in and you know get the kills. But great turnaround. Ambition helping out as well, picking up an assist right there with that brutalizer. You see, we're even going to get ult in that bind. He's, I mean, he was doing very well in the beginning. He got that first turret down on the top side, but Captain Jack's been able to just kind of push him out of lane at this point with the you know the poke that Sona has as well. Yeah, and still behind the one says we have to mention that fact Zed, uh, not Zed, as we look at Zed, but Varus um, has really done a great job of uh, keeping this farm up here. Raven, of course, had his switch banned out in this game. We saw him earlier in the tournament playing a fantastic, fantastic Twitch. That was the uh, turnaround game against Millennium, actually, uh, which we saw yesterday morning. Day one. No, it was in the best three. It's, it been long, it's been a it long. It's been a long. It was day. yesterday. Uh, as Lost Boy, you're gonna get caught out in the jungle. But as I'm actually gonna put the cataclysm down as Captain Jack comes across. Here is Varus. Raven picks up the kill, and there is a light binding on towards Captain Jack. Can they get the finish here? He is well below half health, but Helios and Ambition there in that middle lane is gonna mean that at least for now he is safe. There's a pink ward as well in the middle lane. They're gonna make a play on this middle turret right now because Reaper is coming down from that top. So the turret's already low as it is, and they should be able to pick this up. And there's really nothing Blaze can do with this. They're gonna have to concede it away unless they want to fight without having Lust Boy. Well, I'm not sure that they will. And actually, as I say that, they do decide to dive in there. Bielzehan going very, very low. There's a flash that's coming across. Bielzehan, is he going to be finished off? Yes, he is. There are two kills coming around. Finally, we get one back from Reaper, but he's sandwiched between two people here. Ritsuno also going to be taken very, very low. Exhaust comes on to Reaper. Captain Jack will go low, but is he going to die from Ignite? No, he's not. He survives. And wow, from a four or a five-man mid push, they actually turn around getting a four for one in the end. Great play by Blaze right there. Great, really great control in that team fight overall. Great stuff coming out of Blaze. There's Captain Jack. We saw him backing away. Surviving with very, very little help. Middle turret here going to be pressured down by Blaze. And to be honest, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to save this one. Varus, Lulu and Jarvan coming up towards it. And with the presence of Varus, they may be able to back it off. But Blaze stay. They pick up turret number two.
And Helios is being chased down. Looks like they actually will be able to get the kill on him. Yeah, Helios actually going to dive in there towards Raven, but chances of him getting away from this are very slim. Will go down in the end. That is the second kill for Raven. Yeah, great job by SK2 to actually let him have that kill as well, because looking at the spread that Blaze has, having two on that Rumble, two on Zen, one on Zed, and two on Kaelin, it couldn't get more perfect than that for him. Now, though, SK Telecom coming straight back. They take the middle out of turret as well, so... Really fast, crazy game at this point. Blue buff going to be given over here. In towards Lux. And there's the Dragon coming up in just 20 seconds. Let's see what they do with this one. Blaze going to be pushing this top lane with Ambition Zed. They get that turret nice and low, but will they lose out on a Dragon from this one? Actually, Ping's going down from Blaze towards Dragon, saying we need to get in position for this one because it's going to be coming up very soon. Reaper is the only real one around there as a ward gets put down. Reaper just spotting that one, but the dragon has spawned. Our play is going to try and pull it out in the end. They decide not to. Here's Reaper going to go in on towards Captain Jack, but back to way straight off that one when he saw the uh, Sin and Sona coming into back up. And Joe, looking at Ambition so far, he's sitting at 140 CS, that 1-2-2 one, two, and two score. It, he's really becoming a force to reckon with. Like, when you have so many squishes on your team with Reaper, with Suno, with Raven, and even Starlast, he has that potential just completely one-shot you with his entire combo. And if that happens, you're going a four, or against a 4v5 with a, with a steady Rebel damage, steady Zin damage, and Kaelin, who's already 2-0-3, and three, just hammering away at you from the back line. Well, right now, SK Telecom have, in fact, managed to jockey Blaze out of position. All five men here in the middle lane, so... We'll see if they go down towards this dragon area. Helios and Flame are both there as well. Lustboy just coming in to give them some backup. No one uh, carrying pink wards at this point, so there's no real opportunity to clear out that dragon area. It's a little surprising, actually. I mean, because you have Blaze, they're trying to be really aggressive, take these objectives, and they're against an Akali, so if you have a pink ward and you fight around that, you can pretty much pick Reaper off right off the bat. Not right now. Reaper is trying to uh, pressure Ambition. We are going to see the Lux oh. combo coming in. Here comes a laser. Suno picking one up. Flame is actually stuck there inside the Cataclysm as the Equalizer comes down. Varus Ultimate will go off. Great Light Binding coming out of Suno. And Helios is going to be going low. Raven picks up the killing spree there by taking out Rumble. And we have also, well, I've said, trying to escape in the end. There is Caitlyn going down. And that is an ace, a one for five. Brilliant fight out of SK Telecom. Yeah, it was amazing. They caught Lost Boy off guard, completely destroyed him. He didn't even get the crescendo off, and he had Reaper come around from the backside and just demolish him one by one. Blaze didn't even know what hit him right there. Great play. An ace for one kill. And Dragon. I mean, can it get better than that? Yes, they could have taken <laughs> Baron and five turrets afterwards. But, you know, that's obviously never going to happen. Uh, but 9 to 8 in kills, 23.7 to 25.3. So, Blaze, despite being behind in the kills, losing that last dragon, being aced as well, they are still up in the cash. Warmonks picked up, though, as, uh, the side of that Hex Drinker here for Akali on the other side. Sorcerer's Shoes haunting guys. That giant spell and an amp tome coming out for Rumble, who is just about ahead in the CS. In the middle lane, we see Zed 152 to 86. That's a big, big lead. But also, on the other hand, Varus 140 to the 108 of Kaelin. You know, you mentioned the Warmong uh, picked, up, picked up for Reaper, and I really like that item because. You know, in these fights, Akali's typically will be focused down, and with a Xin Zhao, he could be pushed back into the enemy team, like, even further. So he's building kind of tanky. He'll still have a lot of damage on top of him, and he's, he's trying to allow himself to just get more sustained damage in as you already have, you know, Raven and Suno as potential targets. So he kind of eliminates himself from that, and he should be really, really good at zoning Captain Jack. See, because I'm not going in there as Ambition. He's going to dive on towards Raven, cleanse you, but there you see the burst potential. That was, like, half HP just... Gone. Just oh. absolutely taken away there. As we are going to see Captain Jack coming in on towards Suno. Can they manage to pick up the kill here? We go towards his top lane as Flame going actually very, very low. Beelzehan going to jump back in there. He will die. That cost him his life there. And in the end, it will end up being a two for two. And kills going down across the map, but Blaze, they're pushing down this mid turret. No one is there to, re is really to, there to defend it at this point. No one has home guard boots on SK Telecom, and they're getting a nice split push on, going to get a lot of damage onto that mid and bottom turret. And these are really crucial turrets, especially that middle one. If you lose that, you lose a lot of control of your jungle. Yep, I was having, I was just getting light binded up, but Captain Jack 
Is just going to be hammering away on the turret. There is turret number five. Oh, they get both of them, wow. As they get that bottom one as well. And yeah, I expected them to maybe get one out of the two, but both of them? That's a really great play out, Blaze. Yeah, and Blaze are building a really nice advantage. They have a lot of guild built up as well across all their members. And we just saw how deadly Ambition was right there. I mean, he just completely destroyed Raven. If he can do that every single fight, they're going to win these team, fight, team fights really easily. And we have Reaper coming down towards his bottom side. Looks like they want to chase them down. And instead, he actually goes towards his double columns. 3,000 gold is the difference right now. SK Telecom behind in gold. Still have the kill lead. But are 5 to 2 in turrets at this stage. If you look down the uh, gold between the players, 6,700 to 5,700. 1,000 gold lead for Rumble in the top lane. In the middle lane, it's a 1,300 difference between them. The 80 carries, we still have Varus in lead just because there are three kills in there, four assists, and also got a nice CS lead. And he's pretty much an item ahead of Captain Jack at this point, but. Like we were saying before, if he gets dove on, he has no real solid escape mechanism, minus that ultimate and that, uh, and that flash. And Starless is going to pretty much be forced to protect him with that ultimate, and not to mention the Glitterlands, just to keep him alive. Ambition, I wouldn't be surprised he builds maybe a little bit tanky, just knowing that if he isn't able to one-shot Raven, he's going to have to sustain some damage. But so far, he's just building straight damage. Shift picked up there, along with the Bloodthirster for Virus on his last trip home. We have the Zeal. And the Bloodthirster right now on Caitlyn. So we're going to a little bit of a quiet period as both teams figure out exactly what they need to do in these coming moments to, well, either push their gold lead or get that gold lead back towards even in SK Telecom's case. There is Raven taking the red. And at this stage of the game right now, Suno can one-shot Captain Jack and Lustboy. We saw it actually just happen where he completely destroyed Lustboy. But they have that ability to, if they want to go for it, they land that nice light binding. If they can siege with a blue buff on them, they should be able to take a couple of turrets and really just create a, a giant opening for themselves, especially with, you know, uh, with Bezelhan going in if he wants to get any, or sorry, if he lands any knockups, is going to create a really nice, easy light binding. We pretend towards this bottom lane. Actually, the turret is quite low there. Ambition is hanging around with that blue buff, and as Reaper spots him, he realizes as well, I'm two levels behind. They probably can't take that one versus one there. Oh, we have Blaze coming down. Yeah, Blaze coming down to this one. They're going to try and head off Reaper, but will they be quick enough to get into position? Reaper actually going to go away. Ambition going to go in onto him, though. This is going to be a full on push as a pink ward goes down as well. Ace in the hole coming around. Not going to be blocked. Here comes Helios from the side. This is surely a kill. Shut down there. Nicely worked from Blaze. Yeah, great communication as well. I mean, Ambition was just chasing him down. Not sure if he wanted to commit to it, but once he saw his team coming in, goes in, gets that slow, and Reaper, he cannot really afford to die right now. He is their tanky front line with that Jarvan, and now Blaze should be able to push up if they want to, or they can go for Dragon in about 40 seconds. Well, the fact that they've got these two middle turrets down means that they're going to want to keep a full stranglehold on the jungle already, and that's exactly what we've been seeing from the team so far here in the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship. Once they get those turrets down, they've done a great job of keeping vision high. Lost point also uh, does have the Oracle running at this point as well, so that will only further add to what they can see and what, maybe more importantly, SK Telecom T1 can't see. Yeah, and it looks like they're not going to go for that Baron at all. They do have an Oracle on Lust Boy, so we we're just talking about the vision and really denying it away from the other team in their jungle. That will help out when they finally start to make that push, as we have a lot of wards down for SKT, just trying to control that as well. And they know they have those turrets down, and they have to defend it. Dragon is up right now, and it looks like SKT might be, uh, pick this up. Yeah, SK Telecom going to be going in for that one place. Not really too worried about it by the looks of things. So, well, Dragon's gone down. Okay, that's... That would have given us a nice bit of gold if we'd have taken him. But on the other hand, we'd not risk anything by uh, going in there, maybe a man down or what have you. They're going to end up losing that one. But it keeps SK Telecom in there with a chance to come back on this game. But Blaze moving down that middle lane with all five men. They want to keep that vision high. So we're going through the jungle. And there is a ward. Right next to the blue buff, which Lost Boy is going to take down. And that's what we've been talking about again. This whole stranglehold of keeping things away is Reaper and Ambition going to go head to head. Ignite was used there by Reaper, which I mean, if they weren't going to fight head to head, Ambition, you know, just backed away. Ignite goes down. He'll say, Well, 
No Ignite for you in that next fight. That's fine by me. He's just going to uh, be running the pots to heal himself back up. He obviously has that Blade of the Ruin King plus a Black Cle uh, Cleaver at this stage. I mean, that was, that was a little bit of a scare tactic with that Ignite going down, but I, I love what Blaze is doing at this point because they've had that top lane pushed out the entire time and they've been making plays on the bottom lane. Now they uh, they finally got those bottom turrets, they got the two middle ones as well, and they're starting to go for that four-man push on the top side. They do have one outer turret remaining, so they're really in the driver's seat at this point, but Suno, without that blue buff, he, he needs that. He has no form of sustain at this point. The tier regen's not really going to kick in too much. And that's really going to hurt them. They need they need to secure one. If they do that, then they easily can win these team fights. Right now, Ambition headed down towards the uh, bottom lane just to clear out. There's a big wave of minions, which would uh, probably do a lot of damage to that turret. But also, there's plenty of farm as well. We've seen it. Uh, and what I'd say is a relatively early Quicksilver Sash coming out of Varus here at 25 minutes into it. Baron was started there by SK Telecom as they saw the Zed in that bottom lane. But in the end, they decided, OK, we're not going to be able to take it down quick enough. They're actually pretty still, uh, pretty low level still. I mean, Varus level 14, Suno level 13, as Bielzehan actually very, very low in the jungle. He's going to slide himself away, flashes out as well. Needed to with Ambition coming in. That's, that's a great pickup though for Blaze. Having that flash down means he can't just cataclysm into that back line on the Captain Jack and let's go and just lock them down. So Captain Jack will to keep that flash up for a later time and not to mention they're trying to start off Baron, but they're trying to bait it in because they have an Oracle. Doesn't look like they spotted that ward. Wow. I was actually expecting a little bit less damage, but almost killing Captain Jack with that full combo right there. We have Ambition going in the mid lane. Yeah, Ambition going very, very deep here. Going to get killed off by Reaper. Definitely wasn't the right choice uh, coming out of Blaze. Well, that QSS actually paid off really well for a Raven right there. You saw him cleanse off that ultimate out of Ambition, and that, that burst that comes after that couple of seconds really can catch you off guard. And it allows him to save that Lulu ultimate potentially because that's one thing that's really getting Raven killed is that extra 30% damage that comes in after. What are we going to see? Oh, there is uh, Suno coming in on towards Lost Boy. Of course, he used that laser in the last fight. Not quite ready yet off the cooldown. But SK Telecom T1 looking for the inner middle turret. This would be a great pickup for them. We'll bring them back to 5-3. Blazes blue is up. If they can take this, this would be great for SK Telecom. And I think they are. Yes, they will. They'll head for it. Well, Suno certainly needs that blue. He's had uh, problems securing his own in the past here. But with that happening, Blaze are like, well, we're just going to push straight down middle. Then you take our blue buff if you want it. Suno did pick that one up. Blaze going to push that middle lane back. Raven here have himself a red buff away. As we talked about, already got a Bloodthirster and that ship with the Quicksilver Sash in there. So make sure that he can get rid of everything running both Quicksilver Sash and the cleanse as well. I'm curious to see if Sudo's actually going to build that Zonia's as his item or maybe go for that death cap next. I, I'm not sure if he if he feels like he needs to commit to that damage to be able to one-shot someone on the other team or if he needs that sustain in these fights with that blue. He probably has that sustain, but I guess we'll see what he builds up eventually as he's back with about 1,800 gold. I'm going to be uh, headed back uh, shortly. Just wanted to uh, get things sorted out on this bottom lane. Flame up at the top lane. Paris was up there. Flame, the way things out, going to be taking himself that wave of minions that are coming in Reaper as well. If you look down the CS, still Rumble got an advantage over Akali, middle lane Zed. We call it an advantage, it's actually really not even comparable at this stage. I mean, that's a hundred CS almost that Zed has overlooked. 10,000 gold point already reached here by ambition to the 8,500 of Lux. And you can see just with how strong the mid laners, and I, I say that with quotation marks because obviously Lux was in the mid lane, but between Lux and Zed, you can just see that how strong they are right now, how it's affected each team, because we have uh, Captain Jack picking up that Negatron Cloak because he has to survive that burst that Suno can potentially put out, and Raven, same with the Quicksilver Sash, has to get rid of Ambition's ultimate just to stay alive, so that's, that's just really the snowball effect of one lane getting ahead and how it can affect your AD carries, even your, your supports and tanks. Well, Ambition here going in towards the jungle. Starlast got that Oracle on. But he's a little bit worried about actually taking that one down there. Didn't want Blaze to jump in on top of him. Flame going to be pushing straight through that middle lane, at the, uh, through the top lane, sorry, at this point. Obviously, only the inner turret left in that one. And 
You know, with 28 minutes in, that's the only inner turret left at this point as well for SK Telecom. And yeah, it looks like Dragon's going to be the next point of uh, cont or, uh, uh, fighting here as you know, everyone heading down from both teams. And I'm trying to think, who has a stronger team by this point? I think it all comes down to who really gets that at first catch. If uh, Suno obviously lands a light binding, it's going to create the opportunity for them. But if Ambition can get in there and Helios can get a nice ultimate off to set his team up for a very easy fight. And Dragon is now up. Looks like SK Telecom are going to go for it. Couple of the big items coming out there. Runny Bulwark is finished for Blaze. Plus, Crystal Scepter on Rumble as well. He's got the Andrews and the Scepter. There we go. We are going to see the laser coming out. Flash away from Lust Boy. As the Cataclysm comes out. There's AC in the hole. Going to pick up a kill. But that may be just the only one. But we see Blaze starting to collapse in onto Suno as well. And that is three kills right off the back of it. Reaper going to try and get himself some more in. As Ambition goes very, very low. That Ignite ticking away, but they get the kill before he can finish it. And that will be the ace for Blaze. And that was an ace with Suno trying to bust up our burst down Lust Boy. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get that. And Lust didn't even use his ultimate that entire fight. And so they came out so far ahead. They have quite a bit of gold to spend on top of this right now. And it looks like they're heading towards Baron. As Ambition's going to be in that bot lane just trying to catch up and heal. Or, no, sorry, not catch up. Heal up and apply pressure down there. And that should be the free Baron for them. Yeah, if you look down the score as well, Rumble 527 Flame having a good game of it so far, but the AD carry Caitlyn 417 as well. I mean, that's an impressive score at this point in the game, which they're going to be looking to uh, move on. I guess we wouldn't really expect anything else out of Captain Jack, as we are going to be seeing a pause out of SK Telecom, just as Blazer doing Baron. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, uh, Bizahan's keyboard isn't working. Which, you know, you, you might need that, you know, when it comes to a team fight, so that's understandable. You might need that uh, at any point uh, <laughs> during the game, I suppose. Without a keyboard, you're uh, not doing so well. I mean, he managed to type slash pause, which is interesting, since his keyboard's not working. I think it might be someone else's keyboard, so he's talking for them. I don't know. Well, you'd, you'd at least figure so, right? Since he was the one that typed keyboard not working. But either way, SK Telecom going to uh, have the admins behind there just to give him that helping hand to get things finished. But we can take a look here. Almost 30 minutes into the game. 16 to 13 in kills for Blaze. 46.1 to 40.9 thousand gold. 5-2 in turrets as well. At this point, you can probably say that this is Blaze's game to lose. Yeah, I mean, with how far ahead they are, I mean, they have such a perfect kill spread on their team. Like, the five kills on, on Flame, the three kills on Helios, the four on uh, Ambition, and the four on Captain Jack. Like, they have a perfect spread of in it. And the amount of gold that is distributed across the entire team. You have Ambition, who's fairly strong at this point, starting to build a little bit tanky. He's getting his Giants belt in. But, you know, with a tanky Rumble already, you already have Helios, who's extremely strong with that, uh, that Runic Bulwark, not to mention a Giants belt on top of that as well. They just have a strong front line that SK Telecom doesn't really have the ability to deal with. They don't have a strong front line to kind of counter that. They don't have um, an AD carry that's super fed at this point, which, you know, he has some pretty, pretty good items, but he was forced to go to that Quicksilver Slash, so it's delaying his build a little bit. Yeah, and that with the cleanse in there as well. I mean, that's heavy investment in the defensive yeah. side of things. Or Starlast. Hopefully, uh, we should be uh, coming into this one here pretty shortly. Uh, SK Telecom staying focused. Admin's behind them. Uh, working to fix this one up. But Raven is going to unpause the game. We're going to get back into it. And as we said before, Blaze are currently doing the Baron. And taking Baron. And taking the Baron. And they have a lot of gold to spend. Flames sitting on 1800 at this point. Helos on 1300. Ambition on 1500. And Captain Jack on 1900. So curious if we're going to see a QSS maybe come out of Captain Jack or maybe a Banshee's Veil just so he can dodge one of the light binds or, or something like that. But with this Baron, we should see a nice strong push from Blaze as they only have that one outer turret remaining on that top side. And Caitlyn does in fact go for that QSS. Two QSSs coming out in the same game. We've not really seen much of it this tournament. Uh, maybe even the first time that we've been seeing that uh, quick summer sash. Obviously, we have... A a lot of games here off stage during the group stages as well so you could i'm sure forgive me if i'm uh, a little bit off the mark with that comment uh but what else have we got going in there hex drinker and the giant's belt added in for zed also the uh, giant's belt warden's mail for Xin Chao. needlessly large rod coming in for rumble as well i mean rumble at this point is ridiculously strong with those items 
Yeah, he is. I mean, he's going to be putting out a lot of damage overall. Not to mention that ultimate, which really gives them the ability to chase or disengage if they want to. It does so much damage, but you know, he's up against Reaper, who has a, pretty much a straight tank build at this point. He's 6-4-1, but he doesn't really have a lot of damage. He doesn't have the potential to burst down Captain Jack, and that's kind of just based around how the game's developed and, and what Telecom has needed to, to win these fights. So, what are Bla uh, Blaze going to do? Actually, Reaper going to be cornered off here by Flame going in there. There's Equalizer coming down. Flame Spitzer going to be doing his job. It doesn't matter if Reaper's invisible. He's still taking damage. Ace in the hole going to be blocked out there by BLZ Handbook. Place are going to be closing in on towards that top in the turret. And Ambition, they're, I mean, he's just split pushing at this point, and they're going to have to send someone to deal with him. It looks like they might potentially send Reaper, but if they do that, Blaze is going to have a nice four-man push. They have that siege potential out of Captain Jack, not to mention that, that crescendo if they do get engaged upon. And SK Telecom, they're not looking too good on this game. They started out very solid, I really have to say, and they kept doing that as well. But with the Baron being, being in the other team's hands, oh, we see Starlight's getting caught. Oh, that's not what they need at this point. Helios actually coming in there. The rest of the team from SK Telecom are able to react quick enough to stop that support player going down. Starless gonna probably uh, be backing away completely from that one. Blaze still pushing through that top lane. I mean, they've got Byron buff on after all. They're the team that are gonna be uh, looking to cement that lead that they have at this point. This, they finish off? this might be a key moment right here. They know Ambition's in the mid lane. They know he's there split pushing. If Reaper wants to engage on this fight, they could do a five-man uh, fight onto Blaze and most likely win that uh, engagement as well. But they are pushing that top side, and Ambition looks like he might be coming around to help out. Well, Captain Jack already hammering away here. Actually, I think the light binding did just land in towards Captain Jack. And here we go. Fight going to kick off. We've got Ambition right in the middle of them. Wild Growth goes down. A lot of damage coming out as Flame will pick off Raven. There we see Lux just backing away. BLZ going to be the next target. Crescendo comes out of Lost Boy. Double kill coming down for Flame. Honestly, the turret did die in there as well, finally. And Blaze picking up two kills for not a lot of health even lost. Yeah, and Joe, the full combo from Suno went off on a Captain Jack, but it just did not do enough damage. He's probably about half health, and that's the downside to having like a Lux. I mean, he got fed very early on, but if the enemy team can survive that initial burst, then you're gonna pretty much win these fights, as we do have them split pushing a little bit, Ambition going down towards that bottom side. Should be able to get this turret with that nice huge minion wave, and the rest of uh, his team's gonna be pushing that top side. Well, you say a little bit of split pushing, but Quite a lot, actually. <laughs> they were in the middle lane. They finished off these top turret finalists. They are going to go in. Sarlas falls to flash away. Flame goes in there. It's Lost Boy going very, very deep. And they've done a lot of damage there. Turret taken in the bottom side. Inhibitor goes down in the top lane. And Blaze doing everything that they need to do with this one. This middle turret may even end the game taken down. Ambition was tanking it up. Flame going to be focusing on two here by Reaper and shut down. I still think in the end that was completely worth it, getting that inhibitor and that inhibitor turret on the top side, the inhibitor turret on the bottom side. We're gonna have the Supermans pushing down the top, and then they could always go for that bottom push, but Ambition's been, you know, like we've been saying before, split pushing the entire time, going down at uh, the bottom side of the map. Dragon will be up in about 25 seconds, and SK Telecom, they're barreling down the mid lane, but I don't think they're gonna be able to take this, actually, sorry, they should be able to take this turret, as it's already really low on life, but that's about it. They might be able to turn a Dragon off the back of this. Yep, Sala's just gonna tank it up for the uh, couple of hits it's able to do before it is finished off. SKT now moving in towards that inhibitor turret. Oh, they need going to be it. really careful here, as we are going to see Helios going, puts his ultimate down. Are we going to see this fight going now the way of SK Telecom Ambition? Going to put a lot of damage down with the Cataclysm, locking the rest of his teammates in there. Well, that is uh, two kills for Blaze. Here comes a laser across, finally finished off. It's Starlass that gets a kill. Double kill though for Zed. Captain Jack focusing in on towards Raven as well. Light Binding will actually lock him up there, get the kill as well. Now we have Sona chasing on to Suno, and will they get this one? Another nice light binding. They're chasing in. Flame coming in as well. Three, four, four at this point. This could well be the ace. Brilliant light binding comes out of Suno. There is the slow as well, but they're still chasing in. They want this one. But it doesn't matter, Joe. As long as they keep chasing him down, they're preventing him from backing away. Super is pushing down that top side of the map currently, and Visa had finally going to be up in about nine seconds. Overall, that was a three for four trade, and it looks like they're still going to commit to this. They want to get blood. Well, there. Oh! <laughs> Harpoon finisher. Nicely done. Uh, <laughs> it would have only been better if it was a fish of some point, of some type that got harpooned at the end. Or a whale. Or a whale. <laughs>
Anyways, Blaze. Fish. <laughs> Anyways, Blaze is going to be taking this dragon now. The gold lead getting even further. It's sitting about 8,000 gold at this point. And they have these eight turrets to four. I mean, it was a, an interesting play at a telecom. They wanted to get that mid inhibitor down to kind of counter up the top, uh, the blues in the top, but they were already down so much gold. Baron did wear off Blaze, and that may be, you know, what, what started this whole uh, this whole fight, but they could not win it. I mean, we saw Helios just extremely tanky. He was able to separate everyone. Ambition with great play out of him. Actually took down, I believe that was... Reaper, yes, it was Reaper, okay. So, Red Buff here gonna be taken away by Captain Jack. We have a 23 to 17 kill lead at this point. Gold creeping up to that 10,000 gold mark. 8-4, of course, in turrets. With that one inhibitor down in the top lane. Middle inhibitor not taken in the end by SK Telecom. There's a pink ward by Baron, and we are going to be seeing uh, the next play coming in for this one. Actually, double pink wards put down there by Lost Boy, wanting to uh, really make sure that they've got vision there, although they do anyway have an oracle on Ambition, so uh, maybe not quite needed as they've used it there, but either way, that oracle is going to be helping massively to reduce the vision that SK Telecom have over the top side of their jungle. It's going to mean that you know, Blaze can make the play on that Baron, and SK Telegram are going to have to play a little bit risky to come in there without the vision. Oh, Starlash trying to go for a steal there. Unfortunately, he did miss. And I love the items that Blaze has at this point. You have the Rylai's Crystal Scepter on Flame, and you have two Randuins on, on the team as well. So you're going to have the enemy team permanently slowed, not to mention the attack speed slowed down as well. So they have a lot of control in these fights, and that's all they really need to do. He's had his ultimate... The the use of it has kind of fallen off as you have uh, Zed who's very uh, mobile, you have Caitlyn who can get out of it as well, and uh, Zen who can knock you out of your own trap. So Jarvan not working out so well in the late game, wasn't really able to make much off it in the early game as well since he was just you know going for the support pushing, but still SK Telecom, they don't want to go out without a fight. We've got the last whisper added in there as well for Caitlyn, and another BF sword, so uh, definitely doing the business with that one. There's the uh, pink ward helping out. We can see down in towards the base that the minions are so ridiculously pushed right now. Super minions already hammering away there on the Nexus. So it's a Kali has gone down to help, but Blaze seeing that is just going to say, well, that's fine. We're just going to go in here towards the Baron. The laser comes across very early on, which is obviously not going to uh, be resulting there in the steal. How healthy is the Baron at this point? Can't quite see its health. There we go. It's going to go down picked up by Blaze, but in the meantime, in the base, the Super Minions really doing the work, and they've managed to take down one Nexus turret without being in the base here, uh, Blaze, and the second one also losing more than half health. This could actually be the finisher right here. Yeah, such a perfect play by Blaze. They took out all the vision away from SK Telecom, so they had to go over there and face check it just to see if Baron was being taken, but in the meantime, like you're saying, Minion, wa minion Waves are pushed into their base, took down that one Nexus turret, took out an inhibitor as well. They do have the top one respawning, but still, no inhibitor turrets left, only one turret left for them overall. This looks like Blaze's game. Oh, Jack, uh, Captain Jack gonna be initiated onto there. Is the Cataclysm wow. coming down? Gonna lock only Lost Boy up, but they've turned this one around here. Kill for kill at the moment. But here comes Flame, adding that Flame Spit. There's so much damage coming out. Varus actually did get the ulti down. Beelzehan is gonna fall. Reaper going low. There is Ambition low as well, but they should be able to finish that one off before he dies. And that is three kills already for the one off Blaze. They've got that Baron off, uh, Baron buff on. They're gonna be regening and they're going to finish off the third and final inhibitor as a laser comes across on towards Flame. Starlast, though, will just be taken out of the fight as they've taken down the second Nexus turret. The Nexus itself is going to be focused on. There is the Zonyas out of Flame.